plenty of people have figured out that this is a nice place to hide from the JTF. Under the streets. And if you found this, you're smarter than most of the people roaming around down here. Maybe you know about the bomb that went off. Terrible tragedy, wasn't it? And you probably want to know who did it and why. You might even be the division. Well, that's why I made this. To give you a little something to think about. You ready to listen, Agent? Okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning. I was recruited into the division when I withdrew my application to the CIA to start my own personal training business instead. They came after me, you understand? I didn't go begging for this. I didn't have any secret agent fantasies like some of those assholes. They understood I was interested in working for my country, and they saw that I had the chops right from the get-go. Never thought I'd be called up, but I used to be an optimist. Used to be. I was activated when this thing hit. When they began to understand just how many people would die. How many first responders would be abandoning their posts. How many would be dead. How many people would take advantage of that? I went in in good faith. I took on the bad guys. And you know what that means, don't you? I became a killer. I went in to save the people, to help this city. And I have, maybe. But do you know how many people I've shot on the way? <laughs> yeah. You do. Because you are doing the same thing. I lost count a long time ago. So, you get to this point and you wonder, who's worse, them or us? <laughs> Turns out we've got a lot in common with the people we're shooting at. They're killing people and looting. If I'm honest, I'm doing the same thing. If the only thing that separates us from them is this little red ring, what sense does it make? It got me thinking about whose side I was really on and how I could shape this new world we're all living in. It also told me which lives matter now. Not mine, that much is clear. Unless I'm the one looking out for it. If you think things are going back to the way they were, then you're an even bigger fool than you were when you signed up for the Division. It's survival of the fittest now. And that's us. Me and Keener and any Division agents who have the capacity to be honest with themselves. It's time to drop the bullshit and admit we are our own best chance. Democracy is dead. The rules are ours to make now. And one of my rules is... No more hypocrisy. You know how the JTF and the Div backed out of the Dark Zone, leaving all those people to die? Yeah, I get it. Maybe they would have died anyway. You have to pick your battles. But let's just see how the JTF feels when their little quarantine zone gets zapped for a change. Got some Rikers plenty eager to trade guns in exchange for that little favor? Well, maybe I'll see you out there, Agent. Looking forward. Over and out. I just want someone to know I was here, I guess. If you can hear this, that means you survived. I don't know if I'm going to be that lucky. At this point, I don't know if anyone will be that lucky. Maybe only the rats and the crows will make it. Maybe that's our new world, after all. <laughs> you reap what you sow, they say. Only a matter of time before something like this happened. Anyway, I was here. That's what this is about. And I want someone to hear it. Even if it's just a bird perched on a roof, pecking away at an old cell phone. I was here, you bastards. I was here. Yeah, things have not been good lately. That's a bit of an understatement. 
I never like to be negative, but there aren't a lot of options emotion-wise at the moment. My name is Monica Ariel Philipson. <laughs> Somebody at least write it down somewhere, okay? I'm not sure I'm going to make it. My roommate died right at the beginning, then Daryl. Daryl was my boyfriend. Yeah, and then my best friend, Janie. Then the cellular network went down and, and things went dark. And that's when things actually got bad. I don't know why I started thinking about this today, but you know what I miss? Oh, and I swear to God, I never thought I'd say it. I miss traffic. It's so quiet now. You hear the occasional shouting, feet sometimes, usually running. Every so often you hear shooting or a car alarm, crying sometimes. But it's all so random and sudden and isolated. Traffic was continuous. Traffic meant people, it meant life. People doing things, going places. Traffic meant purpose. Maybe not a purpose I would have had, but still, purpose. And that's gone now. Things might be looking up. I met some people this morning. At first, I only saw a couple guys, so I hid. I don't need those kind of problems, if you know what I mean. But then I guess one of them was a girl. Just bundled up so much you couldn't even tell. She saw me duck down and she came and found me. <laughs> Freaked me right out. But she was okay. Even nice. You don't see that much anymore, trust me. She invited me to come along. And there's safety in numbers, so let's just see what happens. So far, Mary and Case seem all right. I mean, they're alive, which is more than I can say for anyone else I know. Number one criteria for friendship these days, being alive. Shitty standard, right? Still, they have some crazy ideas. Like going into the underground to live. Like the sewers and subways. They say there's too many gangs up here. Too many predators. And they're not wrong. They got a stash of food they say we can leave up here and collect from every now and then. Supply rooms. They're convinced it's the way to go, and they're the ones with the food. Not to mention, without them, I have no one. So, I guess we're going under. It's okay down here. It's not exactly warm, but it's warmer. I guess Mary used to be homeless like five years ago, so she knows her way around. Sort of. She used to spend time in a little camp down here. We even went by to see if maybe anyone there made it. But when we got there, all we found was ash. Literally. You could tell from the shapes. Those had been people. I just hope to God they were already dead. And those fucking cleaners didn't do this to a bunch of sleeping homeless people. I had kind of a close brush today. We're not alone down here, obviously. Other people are hiding in here, but some of those gangs and, and maybe that militia group are using it to move around and stay under the radar. And there's not a lot of places to run down here. Fortunately, we heard them before they spotted us, and... We ducked into an alcove. But shit, that was close. Rikers passed three feet from me and didn't know I was there. What would have happened if one of us had to sneeze or something? I mean, I haven't had to kill anyone. Yet. Not with my own hands. Not yet. Haven't run into anyone for a few days now. Friendlies or not. There's a hell of a lot of tunnels down here, so I guess you don't run into people so much. Which is a good thing, mostly. It's quieter than up top, sure, and 
it's also really boring and dark and wet. We've told each other our life stories and it kind of seems like we've been through everything there is to say already. And we're quiet mostly now. Maybe this is just the beginning. The beginning of what, though, I'm not exactly sure. So we've killed a couple more days in the silence and the dark. And I just don't know about this. These guys are great. I mean, it's probably their fault I'm still alive. But they just want to stay here and sit and wait and see if civilization comes back. See if anyone comes to rescue them in the dark with the stink, trying to decide what to do. And it's nice to feel safer, but this, this is not living. It's true we could die up there, but if this is the alternative, I, I just don't know. Alone again. Not too sure I made the right decision. Odds have got to be better in groups, but it was so dark down there. It smelled. And the walls on all sides. I just can't live like that. Like a snail tucked into its shell. But you know what? The sun's out today. Like an old friend telling me I've done the right thing. Sat in it for like an hour. <laughs> might even get a sunburn. If I don't have much time anyway, I might as well be living it like that. And who knows? Maybe someday I'll even hear traffic again. I don't like the way things are going lately. We've lost a lot of guys. I don't see a lot of gains. And I sure as hell don't see things going back to the way that they used to be. Some of these guys are hung up on power, on remaking the state in their image. That's cool. I can see why they're into that. But I got into this for the money. Everything else will follow. We have to stay focused. The way I see it, the problem right now is that no one is approaching our situation like a good businessman would. And if no one else is going to take the initiative, then I will. We're hearing some rumors that civvies have found a way out of the city. Down here. Yeah, they got tunnels galore under the city. Sewers, cabling, subways. I haven't seen any maps, but it's not too far-fetched. Obviously, some of the subway lines went through, but they shut those things down when they got serious about a quarantine. Still, there's plenty of other options to find an escape route, and I can see that being a holy grail for some of these desperate fucks who got nothing left to live for. But the thing is, if that's true, it'll be very bad for business. Nobody gets a free ride out of town. Not as long as we're around. We've got the infrastructure in place to give people the golden ticket. A ride out of Manhattan. We got helicopters, and we got guns to shoot down anybody who gets in our way. But we only give rides to VIPs who have the cash required, not just anybody. This is not a charity operation. Payment must be in assets, not money. Money's never been worth the paper it's printed on, and now it's really not good for much more than lining bird cages. More than some of those dead presidents deserve anyway. If there's a way out of Manhattan down here, if that's really true and word gets around, we worked hard to have a monopoly and it's going to stay that way. So I've decided to investigate, brainstorm some solutions, make some proposals, straight up entrepreneurial problem solving, responding quickly to change 24 seven. Gotta stay with the times. Military tactics work to a certain extent. And we do that well, and our org may be made up of military guys, but we didn't start out as a militia. We started out as a business, filling a niche, doing the dirty jobs the U.S. government didn't have the guts to do. I'm just saying, let's not forget our roots. Let's remember the other part of what we do well. Make money. And let's focus on strategies to achieve that goal, like any good manager would. To put it succinctly, fear sells. 
it makes sense for us to engage in sending the message this island is lethal. Only the last man battalion has the skills, equipment, and tactics to deal with the situation, to secure any future of any sort. That's our message. That's the key to profit. So we need to find better ways of delivering on that message. Some advertising. I did a little recon on my own today. I found just what I expected. A little band of people with flashlights and backpacks and cute little coats and an NYC subway map. Little twerps needed a lesson in survival. And I gave it to them by showing they have failed to survive. And I took my time about it too. Certain skill sets you have to practice, use it or lose it. Left the bodies down there to send a clear message. The LMB is your only option. I've been considering the options, and I think we have to go bigger here. To crush the competition, we have to literally crush the competition. If there are tunnels out of Manhattan, and there are people who know how to navigate these tunnels, and if they are getting people out of Manhattan via those tunnels, well, it doesn't matter if they're doing it for love or money. It has to stop. Sure, we can discourage the service by killing the competitors, we can leave piles of dead, we can even mutilate those dead bodies to really send a message, but as long as those tunnels still exist, we have a problem. I'm proposing we begin a strategic bombing of tunnels in order to close off any potential means of escape for our competitors and our potential customers. Eliminate not only our competitors, but also any reason to compete. If there aren't any other ways off the island, there's no question where to turn. It's the only smart thing to do. And after the tunnels, the bridges. Gotta think big. No pain, no gain. Gonna present it tonight. Think this will be my chance to move up in this organization. Finally. Told the so-called leadership about my plan, and they had the nerve to tell me to my face that it was ill-advised and lacked foresight. Those sons of bitches can't see vision when it slaps them across the face. Those pussies think we'll get trapped here if we take out the bridges and the tunnels. They're thinking about power, not money, not opportunity. Misplaced priorities. They had the nerve to laugh in my face. Well, it got me thinking. Maybe it's time to move on. Find some people with the right frame of mind. And if the LMB won't see the light, well, maybe it's time for them to go down. We're on patrols in the underground now. Just scouting around, finding anybody hiding, seeing if we can find out anything useful. Guess there's opportunity everywhere, even in a sewer. They just know how to look for it. At least that's what I tell myself to get over the godforsaken smell of it. But at least we can move around without so much interference from the fucking division. We've all just about had it with those clowns. But I'd rather be in penthouses than down here in this shit. I really can't stand sleeping down here. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, in my mind, there's plenty of luxury apartments left to play in. We were down here when some hail hit, so we just stayed put and waited for it to blow over. Which took some time. So we just bunked down. Thing is, I heard something when I woke up. I swear to God, something big and nasty and maybe hungry, <laughs> but maybe it was just a dream. I hope to hell it was. Been thinking about these tunnels down here. People talk a lot of shit about them, but one thing's for sure. Rats down here are the size of house cats. I swear to God, makes you think twice before you close your eyes to sleep at night. Because if they're down here, man, they can get topside. God, I hate to think about what those things eat to maintain that size. Christ. If I ever have kids, I'm going to do them a favor. And tell them those monsters under the bed, good chance they're real. Sleep tight, kids. I had a buddy in Rikers. Used to work on oil rigs in Canada. Anyway, he used to work a night shift in some godforsaken place way up north. He used to tell this story late at night trying to freak people out. Says he stalled out in a blizzard, was just sitting in the truck without power, 
waiting for things to blow over. And something rushed the truck and tried to get in. Something big and hairy. Something that screamed like a banshee. He got that truck back up and running and drove like hell out of there, even though he couldn't see five feet in front of him. Guy swore he had dents all over the truck, shape of fists. I don't know, man. That got me thinking. Maybe there's more out there than we ever imagined. Science doesn't know everything, right? Being a New Yorker, of course I heard rumors about things being a little bit fishy down here. I mean, it's a big city. Anything can happen here, they say. It's New York, city of dreams. And nightmares. And that's true underneath it, too. You got your giant rats? Okay, I can vouch for the fact that's true. And you got your mole people. I don't know about that one. And then you got your gators. They say people flush the little ones when they get sick of having them as pets. And they get down here. And they don't die. They just grow. I used to think that was bunk. Pure bunk. But that dream I had... The dream I had the other night, turns out, wasn't a dream. Okay, I get, I get this will sound crazy. I know it's going to sound crazy, but that doesn't mean it actually is crazy. I swear to God, I swear on the Bible, I swear on the Ray Barrett's hunting knife, anything you want. I swear I saw an alligator down here. Big one. I mean, I, I, I've heard those rumors for years. Years. I always thought it was bullshit. I'm a skeptic. I'm a realist. But man, I, I know what I saw. Uh, all right, all right, heard. But there's no fake in that. Breathing like a dragon. Really heavy. And wet. And the footsteps and the drag of that tail like a huge bag of wet cement getting dragged down the tunnel. Oh, holy shit. I made the mistake of telling the other guys what I heard. Big mistake. They think it's a goddamn laugh riot. Well, they were asleep. Of course they didn't hear anything. I'm not some little wimp who's gonna shriek like a baby when I see it. Okay, okay, hear something scary, but that is no reason to think I'm making it up or to call me crazy. No reason at all. You fucking assholes. I thought I was doing them a favor. I was warning them to be careful. And all they do is laugh at me. It's just like being back at Rikers. I thought things would be different for me once we were out. But now I'm not so sure. Lately, I can't sleep. Why won't they believe me? They must have heard it, too. They're just covering it up so they can look like tough guys for each other. Nobody wants to look like a sucker. That's how it goes in prison. It's one big cockfight. Guys trying to outdo each other with how fucking tough they are. I hear them laughing about me over there. I mean, I can't make out the words, but I can hear them laughing. Don't take a genius to figure it out. And I wanted to help them. Jesus, what an idiot. I heard it again. It came up to us when most of the guys were sleeping. Me? I haven't slept in a few days. Can't take the risk. Not with that thing around. And sure enough, the guard fell asleep. Although this morning he swore that was bullshit. But if he wasn't asleep, how come he didn't notice a big fucking alligator walking up and taking a good sniff? Holy shit, that thing must have been 20 feet long. Mouth like a coffin, teeth like cleavers, breath like rotting garbage, like a goddamn mortuary. I told them in the morning, but you know what they did? They just laughed. Like it was nothing. Up to your old trick, Sammy. That's what they said. Well, they don't know the half of it. So, looks like the gator came back. Uh, I was having a long-deserved rest. And I must have been sound asleep because I didn't hear a thing. And from the looks of things, must have been a big one. Really big one. Big fucking jaw on that thing. No problem to close that mouth over sleeping bodies down in a maintenance tunnel, no sir. Wow. So much blood. Just chewed him 
up and spat them right out again. Most of the guys didn't make it. <laughs> it's just me, really. Just me. Well, they can't laugh now, can they? And they can't call me crazy anymore. They're sorry now, those assholes. Except I can still hear it. The laughing. I don't know who's watching from the shadows, but they won't laugh for long. Oh, no. Look who's crazy now, am I right? Yeah. Who's the crazy one now? <laughs> As long as I got batteries, I'm gonna keep this record. Today all I can say is, shit has been picked clean. No food, no weapons, no money. I mean, the other guys make fun of me for looking for cash still, but I tell them it means I'm not a cynic. These greenbacks are gonna mean something again someday. Besides, I stuff it in my shirt. It keeps me real warm in the meantime. So, you know, busted in a door yesterday. Rich people. Had a lot of dogs from the looks of it. Dogs lived off them for a while before they died, too. Whatever. I'm starting to get used to shit like that. Oh, and I saw a guy on the street eating some chips. Probably spent more energy getting them from that asshole than I got from eating them after. Still, he deserved what he got for being such a little bitch. Crawled out of my sleeping bag this morning to find the guys we had keeping guard on the night shift. Shit, they just, they're gone. Like, just gone. No notes, nothing. And nobody heard shit in the night. I figured they had an idea about someplace to get more stuff. Someplace that hadn't been hit yet, but didn't want to share with the rest of us. So they just split. Maybe they had a suicide pact. Wouldn't be the first time. But Jackson thinks somebody or some thing got him in the night. Says he's not sleeping anymore, which is stupid. Still, he's creeping me the fuck out. Ran into some guys we haven't seen in a few days. They're having a hard time finding food, too. They heard some rumors. Well, seems crazy to me, but I just nodded. Said there's a route out of Manhattan, off the island through the quarantine. But you gotta go through the subway tunnels and the sewers where the rats and God knows what else is. That's gotta be bullshit. But I can't stop thinking about it. My crew can't stop talking about this so called escape route underground. They wanna look for it. I'm like, you dumb shits. You want to just go down there and look? There's miles of tunnels. Some of them got sewage in them. Well, I've already seen enough of that for one lifetime. <laughs> no way I'm going down there for a rumor. Man. Something's happened that's never happened to me before. I woke up in the middle of the night because I was hungry. And my stomach was hurting so bad, like... That was eating itself. I think all the times in my life, I walked in the kitchen and bitched to mom about being hungry because I hadn't eaten anything in three hours. Shit, I had no idea what hungry meant. But this, I haven't eaten anything in two days. I'm starting to look at pigeons in a whole new light. It's, it's scary. Makes me start thinking about what happened to those guys who disappeared. Man, that shit doesn't even make sense. So today, we scavenged for the gear. Rain boots. Then I took a nice waterproof coat off a lady. Bitch wouldn't stop screaming until I slapped around a bit. But I need that shit. Because we're going in. Those guys finally talked me into it. Because we're running out of options. And Marty was talking to Stalingrad the other night. Guy's read too much for his own good. Fucking Stalingrad. He's going on about some shit like during the war, the Nazis attacked and no one got in or out for a long damn time and they ran out of food and, and things started getting really fucked up. I told him to 
shut up when he got to that part. My dreams are bad enough already. Well, it's warmer down here. At least there's that. It doesn't smell too good, but above ground it's pretty bad too, even with the cold. Yeah. Only so many bodies you can have lying around before it stinks the place up a bit. So, it's not bad so far. We got a compass, so we're heading east to Brooklyn. Spirits are high. I'm starting to think we're really gonna make it. You can see that other people have been here, but no bodies yet. Gives me hope. But there are plenty of rats. Marty told me there's been rumors about a colony of giant alligators down here for decades. That guy's such a dick. Starting to wonder about this compass. I mean, do they even work underground? Or maybe Marty's sending us on some fucking goose chase just to get his rocks off. I wouldn't put it past him. Every time we get to a fork in the tunnels, we end up having a fight. Nobody's sleeping. And worse, nobody's eaten. We only had two days worth of food. I figured there was no way it would take longer than that. I mean, walking to Brooklyn can't take that long, right? Jesse's trying to skewer rats. I'm not that gone. Not yet. Well, we split up a few hours ago. Couldn't have lasted like that. Squabbling like little bitches, it was pathetic. Marty explained how the compass works, so it makes sense to me now. But the other guys wanted to head north and head up to Queens. Marty and Jesse and me, we're heading to Brooklyn. We don't need those assholes anyway. They're just slowing us down. We've covered a lot of ground. Might not know exactly where we are, but I gotta believe we're almost there. Because the rats are starting to look pretty tasty, and that ain't good. So, I woke up today down here in this fucking place and it's dark it's pitch dark and quiet as hell except for something scuttling out there and my lantern is gone I reached out to try to find it and it's gone just gone I yelled out for Marty for Jesse felt around in the dark something moved under my hands stuff it's it's all gone my lantern my new coat they left me my phone and my sleeping bag and my money all stuffed safely into my shirt you ever try and eat money it don't taste real good oh god something's out there i can hear it it's coming closer oh jesus sweet jesus i'm so hungry people prying up the manhole covers at night, ducking into the sewers. Our guys were too far away to decontaminate, and it ain't easy to run in this gear. But they marked the manhole cover, and I've been trying to patrol the area, just in case anything or anyone pops up. As far as I'm concerned, anybody going down there is for sure infected. <laughs> you don't hide when you got nothing to hide for. Crap, I saw him. I couldn't believe it. It was a ways away, so first I thought it was rats. But rats don't come that big, not even in New York. And rats don't slide manhole covers back. I called to the guys and started heading that way, but the targets scattered, just like vermin do. But that's when I had the idea. We figure out where infected are hiding down there. It'll be easy to get them cornered. Can't exactly scatter in a sewer, can you? Whatever's down there, they're even dirtier than the ones up here. They got more than just the virus. We can't afford to ignore the threat. <laughs> All the guys are talking about the mole people now. That's what we're calling them anyways. Gotta be a priority now. There are rumors maybe somebody's found a way off the island down there. If that's true, that's gonna make our work even harder. 
and very dangerous for all the innocent people outside who are still safe. <laughs> when I think of the selfish bastards who'd put people like my alien danger when they're just gonna die anyway, it makes me sick to my stomach. No one wants to be a sacrifice, I get that. But we all gotta keep in mind the bigger picture now. Anyone left on this island? Well, we're not getting out. Like it or not. I've been put on special shift work, me and a bunch of the guys. We're gonna go down there and root that scum out. It's high time. We can't let people hide from what needs to be done, and we sure as hell can't let people get out if the rumors are true. We start at dawn. We figure they'll still be asleep without sun waking them up. We think they're coming up at night to forage, so we gotta get them when they're tired. Can't put up a fight. Started the patrols today. Jesus, it's nasty under there. Hard to believe anybody'd live in that filth. I mean, even before this shit hit the fan, people lived down there. Had dogs. Christ, we found a whole colony of them. Deceased, still wrapped up in their blankets. Sometimes two in one blanket. Had to sterilize the whole area. Took a lot of fuel, but we have to be thorough. A couple of dogs came by and we got them too. But they just ran off down the tunnel. Christ, the shadows in the tunnels as they ran. All lit up and howling. Jesus, it was something. <laughs> Woke up in a cold sweat this morning. Crap. Dreaming about Ellie again. And Carol too this time. But Carol's a grown woman. She's at least had some kind of life. Ellie's just a little girl. She gets this thing. Christ, I can't even think. But she won't get it. I'm not gonna let this thing get to Minnesota. Those bastards down there are not getting out of this city. Not if I have anything to do with it. We are gonna clean those damn tunnels out if it's the last thing I do. I've been hunting the tunnels pretty regular now. Been a rough go so far. Can't move too fast, and some of those people, they've been there a while. They know how to get away. Starting to wonder if they really do got away off the island. Like maybe they could get to Brooklyn or Queens or Jersey. Because if that's so... I just keep seeing Ellie's face. In that photo Carol sent me last year. She was only three then. She's four since November. Sweetest thing you ever saw. Wonder what she looks like now. My beautiful little Ellie.
Barney was waiting for me, waiting for me to do something. And I told him to move back out, leave him alone. I tell the guy to wait 20 minutes, and then leave and never come back. Barney and I walk back out. He's asking me the whole time, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck. I got nothing to say. And I can tell by the way he's starting to shout that this ain't gonna go well. Very least, he's gonna tell the others that either I'm too scared or too much of a pussy or some other bullshit that I can't do this anymore. I tell him to shut up and walk in front so we don't get any ideas. I can tell he's nervous like he don't trust me no more. And I don't know. Maybe he's onto something. Just might be.